I feel like you're really sexy and I just look like a little gnome. <laughs> <laughs> just go with the gnomeness. <laughs> okay, welcome to today's video. As you may see, Sarah and I are getting into our inner goddess energy. I feel like mine is yes. like, like a fairy pixie and we've got Cleopatra joining us today. <laughs> <laughs> you're amazing babe <gasps> i feel it i feel it i feel quite um i feel quite excited actually yeah I feel really like oh a little bit buzzy yeah yeah exactly yeah i can like feel a, this is good like a kid on crack is flowing yeah definitely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, great okay. great thank you so Ooh. we're gonna shake for five seconds and then we're gonna stop and we're gonna close our eyes after you've had your cacao maybe not shake with the cacao although if you want to try that I'd love <laughs> no that. that's really hot and dangerous <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll stop and we'll take a breath and have a quick hone in on what we want to come through in this moment okay okay, okay. so let's just shake ready three two one <laughs> And stop. And now, close your eyes. Bring your hands together at your heart in prayer position. Apparently today is a musical edition. Mm. And just breathing in through the nose. Out through the toes. In through the nose. Out through the toes. Last one. In through the nose, all the way to the back of the body. And all the way down, 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 and out the toes. Allowing God's source to enter our field even brighter. Clearing, cleansing, aligning, releasing. As we rest in the knowing that only that which is for the highest good for all may come through in this now moment. And so it is. Mm. Whenever you're ready, we can open our eyes. I kind of want to do a little tippy tappy on my heart. <laughs> but we can come back and get going. So... Welcome everyone. I hope you joined us. I feel like I haven't made the title for this video yet, but I want it to be something along the lines of the goddess gene. Yeah. I don't know why. I feel like I'm vibing on goddess gene. Yeah. This is my beautiful friend Sarah. And Hi. I will let Sarah lovingly <laughs> introduce herself whenever she's oh. ready. Um feeling myself. Yeah, but welcome to everyone. And we are super excited to connect in today. We've been planning this for a little bit of time. Yeah. And yeah. That's... I can't believe this is like, the, this was the divine time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's just share in that awareness, I feel like. Yeah. It's, like, it's it funny you should say that, because I was literally just like, let's just share in the awareness that we're all seeing this at the right time. And you yeah, said that, definitely. and I'm like, oh. Wow, oh, it does feel, it feels very unique and um, alive right now Definitely. and majestic um hi <laughs> yeah, I thank can you feel for, your radiance thank you for the warm-up thank you for bringing the space in um i'm sarah <laughs> um i've been a friend of hannah's for a few years now and we met on a activation vibration space um, in a group and we just have hit it off since then really and we are soul sisters star sisters <laughs> unicorns unicorns colliding into his, to each other's lives in and out here and there vibing energetically aligning yeah. Realigning each other after every time that we speak. It's amazing. And pivotal timing. 
yeah absolutely and then coming back to each other so refreshed so glorious and radiant every time so thank you so much Hannah thank you for having me for being here (laughs) yes would you like to tell us a little bit about your art maybe everything that you're doing at the moment and maybe where people might be able to find you obviously we can mention exact social medias at the end but um okay yeah tell us a little Um, about your projects my project so I am an (laughs) artist I'm an artist I am more of a multidisciplinary artist I have been making um like prints and um making murals and now I'm in my uh sculpture era so I'm making yeah. sculptures and I would say what runs through me when I make those sculptures are um they have a kind of indigenous African contemporary modern soul yeah kind of soulful evolutional um poignant kind of powerful kind of pieces um and I make them intuitively I get inspired by God every time and they are just it feels like my ancestors coming through when 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 I look at them or when I make Mm. the things it feels like a collection of past lives that are coming through through me and every time I make it it feels like a part of me that I didn't know or recognize before and it's the part that I can only recognize through making art it feels like I I couldn't reach that by doing anything else so yeah resonate I feel that yeah I feel that. I mean, Sarah's work is beautiful and it is really evocative. I feel like the colours specifically as well is what really catches my attention about what you create. And then as I look deeper, it's like, oh, my God, there's so much intricacy involved in everything that you're doing. Oh, Um, thank you. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm more of a a flat painter. (laughs) Yeah, I love that painting in the back. I told you before. I yeah, think it's so marvelous. It's gorgeous. one of my faves. But I, f- I feel like for me, I don't have a plan either. Like I just channel what comes mm. through, and I allow. It's what you said there that really tickles my my membranes is how <laughs> you you feel like it just moves through you, like it's this thing yeah. through you as a vessel yeah. to create. Definitely. And I think that that is in my personal and humble perspective again what do I know I'm not claiming to know everything but I believe that that's what makes real art because it's the expression of something authentic an expression of something yeah. you can't yet express yeah it's through this physical form you gave it life yeah that's how I, how it feels like and definitely like what you said authentic because I am I'm really like The resonancy, if that is a word, is so important to me. I want to see myself in it as well. I don't wish to create anything that doesn't feel like I'm not doing it because I'm trying to make something that people will like. Of course, like that kind of, you know, when I'm sharing my work, I, I desire it's nice if people like it but I wouldn't change my work to suit another person or people yeah it's really um through God for me to share as my unique self and I know that it will evolve as art does evolve and I also look forward to that I look forward to mm-hmm. how it is going to look in three months or six mm-hmm. years and how different it will be um, it's kind of like I went to my parents house a few months ago and they're cleaning out the attic and I've got all my old school books and um, art stuff I used to study art at school and like it's so funny like to see the work that I was doing it's kind of like yeah it's hard to not put it down but <laughs> I love that <laughs> but we're just always evolving and I think with something like when you start expressing yourself creatively and you can look back like you musicians or any any creative outlet and you can look back five years later writing and be like oh my gosh I used to write like that or it's like looking at an old photograph of yourself and capturing time 
beautifully said and it's like this time capsule that can never be replicated and I, I always think of art or yeah any kind of expression as like learning a language of your soul like mm. it's that expression of something mm. that really gets defined and redefined the more energy we're placing into the skill itself as you share yeah. like I also am looking forward to your evolution and I yeah. um I can't remember what it was I I did a similar thing and I painted a, a portrait it was for my final piece at school or something like that and it was you had to pick an emotive piece and I'd done like a tragedy scene right and um, recently I've been studying a lot of Frida Kahlo just because I absolutely adore her and obviously I spent a lot of time in Mexico and I stayed mm -hmm. in various Frida places she was just like guiding my journey from no, some esoteric area and obviously from the physical sense as well like one of the most famous people to to have been uh I suppose yeah exposed to the world from from Mexico really um but yeah. I've started another painting and it's so different it's the only other portrait I've ever done and I'm actually terrified to do the face because I've just like I've whited out where I want the eyes to be I've got the head shape and the body and I has just stayed there looking at me for about <laughs> over a month now. It's, but it's that, that expression unlocks something within you, you mm. know? And actually I feel like that leads us in beautifully to what we were kind of talking about prior to this call and kind of what we wanted to share a little bit more or delve into a little bit deeper in this call mm -hmm. um, or in on this video. And that is about... I suppose it's about sacred sexuality, isn't it? And the expression of said sexuality and sensuality as a woman and yeah. what sort of archetype we have been exploring in mm -hmm. our realms mm -hmm. and what that's really been looking like for us. So yeah. I'd love for you to share a little bit more about what you were expressing before the call, whatever you um, feel like. Yeah, help. I was just I was just saying to Hannah, she asked me how I was and when I dropped into my body um in the moment I was um listening to a audio book called um is it the art of seduction I just started to listen to it and um there are kind of maybe eight different personality types and this is all very fresh in the moment and just before I got on a call with Hannah it just started to explore the personality type of the siren and um, it talks about the siren being linked with characters like Cleopatra for example any kind of goddess kind of energy visual beauty and um, sexual energy but this character type knows how to use it yeah like um, refinement that, yeah that's something that I am um, desiring to explore more um and it has been coming up a lot for me within the past couple of months you know we're both I'm constantly working on myself not in an, in an exhausting way but you know being growth mindset uh, yeah growth mindset you just can't help it yeah it's fun for us I just this can't is, help but work on myself yeah it's 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 devotional playtime this is my new course yeah. Un, unselfish plug devotional yeah. playtime <laughs> oh is it okay 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 which we need to talk about by the way I have an invitation I would love to you. I yeah, would love to we'll do that another time um, <laughs> and um yeah it's just been coming up a lot I've also been working a lot with my feminine energy and starting work like really devoted work on it I have touched on it before in the past couple of years but not stayed with it um but this is the first time that I I am on the feminine energy journey and <clears throat> it started with feminine energy but I what I realized is that when you start with feminine energy you're going to get hit to the masculine energy and then you're going to be bouncing between the two in terms of working on yourself and my studies one has just ping pongs to the other one <laughs> for sure and I thought that um I just need to work on my feminine energy and then I um have understood that you know we need both and um how to detect 
the wounded sides of us within our feminine and masculine energies. And um, when I have been, before I started, I felt in my heart, like God speak through me, or I felt in my heart that I want, I feel like I can let go a lot more. I want to be lighter. I want to be, feel lightness. I want to feel more happy and, and, fun and you know just more open not that I'm not but I just felt something in me that wanted more yeah yeah. the raw essence of the feminine we want to be full we want to feel more we want to embody more more. yeah Yeah. I want more give me more (laughs) yeah and that felt so good to kind of like I was feeling like I was on the precipice of it but also at the same time by by desiring it was met with so many limitations self-inflicted limitations like um who would I become if I had that or Mm. what does that mean for me my old personality or is that selfish or why do I want this you know all those questions Mm. start coming up when when you desire something else I mean that happens for me it might not happen for for everyone else but it's the transition between one one place to another and so on this journey, I've gone, I'm still working with my masculine and feminine energy and healing my wounded and healing my feminine so that I can be more divine and hold more of a divine space. And I think that's why it has led me to this point today um, where we were speaking about the siren because it was the first one I heard about. And I had this kind of wave of, um, yeah, I... I feel the goddess within me, but I also feel like I am not manifesting her in um, my exterior experience. So um, I feel I feel the best that I have done in my body. I feel the best in my ability to express myself. And I really feel that I can trust my intuition. So in this part of my journey, I'm really starting to line up with my divine femininity. But there was a block in me that my expression of femininity, so my goddessness and my, um, which linked with my childhood, because when I was growing up, I was tomboyish. And also I have an older sister and um, my dad, just to be protective, he was always quite um against you know wearing short dresses or a lot of makeup or this kind of thing you know when we're young and I could see why he did it but it left a mark on me that it was bad so I think I've been running through life not wanting to be too beautiful because I didn't want to um uh upset my dad basically you know and I'm a big woman now and like I can kind of let go of that like it's safe to be beautiful you know there's no shame in it yeah. And I, I love beautiful women, but for some reason I, I have, well, I know why I have thought it wasn't something that I could be or I could express in the way that my soul wants to it to be expressed. So that is where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah, well, and thank you for sharing that with us because I think yeah. you've you've touched on some really beautiful things. And I just wanted to perhaps maybe mirror something back to you that came up for me when you were speaking there which was like what if the goddess energy is never not there yeah definitely just us not able to see or feel how Mm -hmm. we are imprinting and refracting Mm -hmm. that's not a word maybe it is it is now it on (laughs) other people and those environments and those places and spaces and how I feel like uh have you ever heard I can't remember what her name is on Instagram I think it's like feed me jewels she no. does this thing called dopamine dressing okay what I is am, that? I'm all for it it's basically just like wearing beautiful things and not giving a crap if you're extra or if people are judging you or we, you know she literally she just like dresses up in the most beautiful clothes it yeah. is excessive I love that quote unquote for today's standards but do you know what it, it's inspired me endlessly yeah. just seeing her unapologetically dressing up and she she said something the other day of like I dress the same now as I did when I was three you know like that's kind of her <laughs> yeah, vibe of like that's, that's what I want because when we yeah. were younger 
I think I was given quite a lot of liberty with things like that. Like my mum, very beautiful woman, like aesthetically beautiful. She loved clothes, still does. There, but there was like a, a model that you fit you know there was that kind of like this is what you wear and it's quite proper it's quite mm-hmm. elegant it's quite mm-hmm. subtle it's yeah. like a woman doesn't you know reveal this yeah yeah which I don't have a problem with at yeah. all and I, I've I've also noticed how it's flavored me and my essence and where I'm at now I do feel more comfortable in subtle mm. and that's not to say I don't enjoy dressing up or I don't enjoy this, but I'm not comfortable yet mm-hmm. in that space. And I, I, I'm kind of in this a similar spl- space, a similar space, mm, space, yeah. the space place <laughs> in the sense of like the unfolding of the sexual energy is this like endless rhythm mm. that it doesn't matter how you go through it's the most enjoyable way that is the way right mm. when we're when we're dancing with those energies in life and this is again just my perspective but it's all about enjoyment it's all about feeling your way through it yeah. and there are certain people that just make me confident like yeah. there are certain friends that I'm just like yeah because we can just be completely weird around one another and I know I'm not being judged I know that if someone uh you know there's different types of people in the world some people take oh you're dressed up or like what you done Mm, that for you know that kind of like oh why'd you bother what you know like that kind of low-key uh (laughs) backhanded compliment but then there are other people who are just like yeah shine queen and like even if they're just like chill about it it's like oh okay I have permission but we don't obviously need that permission it's just like you know raw honesty because I I think that's what I want to be on my channel always and I'm sure this will evolve and grow and change as I do but it's it's more about friendships now that can create that confidence within me and I know for sure that you're one of those women that spark this innate sensuality in me in a way of like yeah of course I want to date my friends like of course I want to date the milkman if I you know yeah. milk woman the woman at Tesco's yeah I'm gonna yeah. do it all because actually it's fun it feels good and it lights me up like it it really yeah. does activate this energy within me where like if I'm playing in this frequency and understanding more of what that means and unfolding into it yeah we amplify that together through each other's appreciation so yeah I want to share again thank you for raising this and for bringing it to us um because yeah. Cool. yeah we can kind of delve into that for a little bit I would yeah. uh really love to hear about your perspective of the archetype that you described um for this well you mean the siren yeah I I've just found out about this oh, it's fine <laughs> we're gonna spitball on this we're just okay, gonna okay. give our own unique but, expressions yeah, we can't get it wrong here <laughs> yeah, it was just I literally just had a taste so the audiobook was like quite long and then it had a really long introduction and then just before I spoke to you I think I was like maybe five to seven minutes in and it's a very well orated slow cadence kind of one so if I reflect on what I heard and also reflect on maybe my um how I in my vessel decode it and maybe what my vessel wants to um the medicine from that maybe in those three directions Gorgeous. so I think I mentioned before the siren is the um she's visually aesthetically beautiful and she has a lot of sexual energy and she knows how to use it I think we were speaking like everyone has sexual energy um maybe on different scales um and then knowing how to use it is a complete different thing it's just like learning how to use magic like we all have power but then you know we go to Hogwarts to learn (laughs) to learn how to use it what to use it for yeah and and you know run through walls and (laughs) and uh yeah stuff like that I think like well that's life really we all have this power and it is in our journeys just learning how to use our power what is it how do I use it how do I not use it where where we put our attention and and refine it yeah so we, we are 
making magic right now. We are using our power to have this conversation, to uplift ourselves and all of your listeners, and to connect our hearts together and just have this divine experience. Uh, we can also use our power in different directions. So what I understood was that the sirens know how to use their sexual energy. And um, this book is based a lot on um, history. So it's not, it doesn't seem to be based on like modern science or modern occurrences. There's a lot of references to Roman times and Egyptian times to support the, the characterized narrative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and um, he was talking about Cleopatra and um what was what's the casanova as well as a kind of male siren um, and what they did and how they used their energy to um allure people to, to seduce others um but yeah i think the point where i got to was just kind of like the way that um cleopatra was dressed and how she looked and that men um, from the male perspective, that, you know, the first thing that men see or are allured by in terms of a um, heterosexual attraction is the way that a woman looks and presents herself. And that um, it is exciting to kind of be interested in aesthetic or to be changing it up um, is attractive for for men this is based in you know we're talking about egyptian times so this is not i'm not agreeing or saying that this is you know golden or sacred knowledge it's just what they were saying um and then the way yeah the way that it hit me of course like i want to be cleopatra <laughs> <laughs> and not? yeah why not and i think i i think but i have definitely been on a journey of connecting with my feminine energy we spoke before that I've I've touched on it a few times in in the past over the years but I've never kind of now I'm really studying it and I'm seeing how um, my life is changing and how I'm changing because of it and it kind of um, has touched this kind of goddess type of thing so I feel like this has been a natural start of another addition into the mix of my the work that I'm doing on myself and um so we have the goddess and then we have um so the way that I've interpreted it for my being is that there has been a calling for me that wants to um be more um my soul wants to express its visual identity in a in a way that I've kind of always wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Like I love jewelry, I love like, I love fashion, I love clothes, but I, I love beautiful things rather than like trends or like, you know. And I think like, I'm ready to change it again or go deeper into it or something in this direction. And the past couple of weeks, um, and spirit has been speaking through me to to channel it and since I have been channeling it I've been knocking into books like this and conversations like this and um buying makeup and getting a few bits here and there you know and not in a way that um I'm doing it to get anything it's just feeling like it's a part of me that wants to come through and I'm just surrendering to it and I'm pleased by it I'm um, very pleased by it. I'm pleased by how it makes me feel. Um, mostly, yeah, I'm pleased by the way it makes me feel. And I'm kind of surprised by it because I never saw myself as someone that cares about the way that I look um, to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, I'm not not very much like that, even though I am creative and I love art when it comes to myself. And I just kind of like, yeah, whatever, it works, like very laid back. And I still love that about me. And I also want to play on it as well and see a, open a new door to myself and still have that relaxed, natural side of me, but just open up to who I am more. Um, and yeah, to unfold and 
explore my sexual energy whatever that means to me because it might mean something else to to you and what you've been through and how you are and it I think it will be really fun to yeah <laughs> I think it's really fun it, it is fun and that's part yeah. of the fun isn't it like yeah. it's part of the and part of the unfolding yeah it's part of the play and I've been kind of moving towards play has been a really interesting word for me these past couple of days I think um and I've been wanting to play more and it's been coming about and I know I kind of see why I've I have closed myself off to play or put play on the side um like if I have something to do and my you know my spirit will be like oh let's um let's do a bit of yoga or let's practice let's do some dance or let's do something and then I'm like oh no we don't have time for that and that's been happening for so for so long that now I'm in my okay I'm going to listen to you because you're a lot more interesting than what I was doing before and so I've been leaning more into play and you know, actually, it makes life more fun. And my fear of it taking over my life and me not being serious enough and everything going haywire is like a complete, like, that is not it. That's not what happens. It makes life more juicy and fascinating and um, enchanting. And that is like who we are, really, like mysterious and yeah <laughs> it gives life not takes yeah, it definitely and it's only just it can just it flows in and flutters in and then it's like okay we're done now that's all I wanted was just to dance for two minutes <laughs> or, yeah I, I found this earlier on my walk this beautiful flower gorgeous how do you and, get it to stick to your hand like that oh I'm just holding it oh right okay it was on the floor just perfectly placed and I don't know why but it felt like a, a precursor to this and I'd even told my mum like before we'd started or decided anything I told her we were doing some potting like with some little planties yeah and I was like oh yeah I'm gonna do my nails later so it's fine like I'd already got this in my head of like yeah I'm gonna do this later so I can get dirt under my nails type and when you came on the call to kind of share a little bit beforehand yeah I only two days ago started doing like a, a practice through one of the mind valley webinars. oh yeah yeah which one I'm really struggling to remember their names I think I've written them down was it but a couple no it was two ladies one of them she looked like a friend I have but I can't, I can't remember <laughs> her name that's how I've just been remembering her um but the other one was Layla Martin, Layla Martin. And it was like all about sexual energy and how to use it to manifest. And mm. I feel like essentially we're always manifesting, right? And this was yeah. a point that she made beautifully. And she was like, but when you refine this life force energy, right? Because the sacral chakra is indeed where our life force is um, coming from it's where it's permeating from and it's how we increase our connection to the play to the love to you know all of the bits and pieces in between and um for me my journey has been a lot about unfolding that too de-armoring the shame de-armoring the womb space and the things that come up when you talk about oh that tops a bit low or what would your grandmother mm, say or you know yeah. all that kind of stuff of like yeah. yeah don't do that you know that's so inappropriate but also where else in life do we do that to ourselves you know we do that with our passions and our work if we're in an artistic field especially I feel like mm -hmm. with our friendships with our lovers with receiving love with receiving money with receiving compliments with receiving all of these things mm -hmm. and to work with your sexual energy I just kind of want to clarify this it's about de-shaming you know unshaming ourselves and stepping into this space of divine frequency willpower divine frequency creation that is a collaboration with pleasure and play and sensuality and that for each woman or man or whoever it's going to be completely unique it's going to be completely unique to every being mm -hmm. that that system innately is is the path of liberation itself 
And I had a really interesting thing come up that I just want to mention. We we will have to go into another day because I feel like it's a fucking mind rabbit hole. But okay. the, the first thing that came up to me was, am I connecting to demonic energies by exploring my sensuality? Okay, right, That was yeah. one of the, mo- the first and forefront mm-hmm. things in my mind as I was watching this webinar, because for me, it's not old. Like I've been working with sex magic, quote unquote, for years of my life, like years and years and years, sometimes not so consciously, sometimes very consciously. But, it, it, you know, you can never be too skilled, in my opinion. You can always refine this process. And understanding that that was still a thought that came up and doesn't necessarily mean that I'm believing in it mm. or that the, my conscious mind is there but that it's in the ethers it's in the collective there's this huge demonization mm-hmm. of exploring your sensuality or of exploring this energy or of even referring to it as sex magic mm-hmm. like how many people if, I don't know who's going to watch this in the now or near future but you know comment below if you actually felt triggered by my use of the word sex and magic in the same sentence. <laughs> Did that make you think I was some evil witch? <laughs> I hope so. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> I Definitely. hope I triggered the fuck out of you. No, yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm not. But no, seriously, like that really shows us where we're at yeah. as a collective, I think. So I'd love mm-hmm. to hear, uh, obviously I'm aware of the timing, but if there's anything that kind of has come up for you in terms of what you would like implement in practice, in embodiment, in physical, tangible, Sarah, beautiful mm-hmm. world, obviously your your art and your lifestyle, I feel like is this romantic, sensual experience anyway. Yeah. So tell me more about how you, you wish to implement what you've been learning. Okay, let me just, Feel into it. Beautiful. Mm, how I wish to implement my sexual energy, or what I what we've been discussing. Whatever you feel, sweet love. Whatever you feel, whatever's coming through for you. Um. Okay, I'll just say whatever's coming okay. through. Okay. Love so, it already. Don't care it, what it is. <laughs> I will love it. I know it. It it is just kind of dropping into the body more of this more of more feeling into the presence more um this kind of nourishing of yourself and Mm -hmm. and without shame Mm -hmm. in all areas of life like like you said it was so spot on it was basically removing shame from from our experiences I think then sets off the sexual energy. Um, I've personally experienced sexual shame in my life and I have been healing that and it's been great. And what wants to come through to me in this now moment is just enjoying my unfoldment of my sexuality enjoying and sexuality to me right now just feels like pleasure and feels like play and having fun and and perfume and oils and and just travel and all of the stuff that makes me feel alive and um there's a light burning inside of me and that it is it is safe to be seen and it's safe to be beautiful and it's safe to want to be beautiful more beautiful and it's safe to desire things and it's safe to um flirt with life you know and and have this kind of lightness to you and enjoyability and not cower towards other people that that don't want it or don't express that doesn't make you bad it just everyone is different but this is something that really wants to come through me this enjoyment this sensual enjoyment of life experience Mm -hmm. this light play um yeah and i know that with that i want to explore my shadows in that so that I can I can uh, have respect for for the side of me that is afraid of that or 
you know, is is holding on to some other truth that isn't in alignment with that and just be there for that side of me and, and let her know that I hear you, I feel you, I see you, I know you. And um, in in this part of my experience, this is this is an, an, an unfoldment that I'm excited about and I would love for you to come along with me, but, <laughs> you know, it's going to be fun and we're going to enjoy life so much more. So I think it's more, more about having an essential experience with life, enjoying, leaning back and not pushing, not pushing life away. Um, oh, that's a big yeah not pushing Big life away mark underline yeah. <laughs> yeah not doing that not pushing pleasure away yeah and yeah <laughs> the delight in all mm. you said that so beautifully thank you thank you so much for sharing with us what about you i would love to hear your how this has been affecting you i want to hear it well i'm going to shamelessly it. plug <laughs> okay go and shamelessly plug i'm here for it because this is exactly what I've been wanting more for myself and there was this innate need for me to create a program where I could take people through my process and share a bit more of myself connect with people in a really deep way create this beautiful container of just like loving fucking empowerment of like it's sensational people that just want to grow and glow and not necessarily yeah. needing an end goal but having an end feeling like just this mm -hmm. feeling of just full nourishment in my body. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to kind of work with people who were a little more um, aware on their spiritual journey of their, their inner world and their sensuality, their creation, what they're wanting from life and who value the power of other people, holding mm -hmm. them with that same intention of power and love mm -hmm. and just complete. I'm not going to let you slip from this this platform because that's where you belong and that's where I am too. You know, that kind of yeah. like support network that essentially led me to create devotional playtime. And actually what I'm wanting is for things to come through that experience. I'll link below for everyone who's interested. Um, my video explaining devotional playtime, I've already kind of delved into that in a little more detail about the structure and what it might look like. Um, but for me, that is going to be my implementation process on a new and deeper level by having these conversations, by sharing our practices, like what are we doing to create more magic in our sensual aspect? And how are we romanticizing each other? How are we romanticizing ourselves, our lives, mm -hmm. our art? All of these things to me just feels like the next level for me and my work mm -hmm. and my being. And it's it's so amazing like to have that parallel. I always know when we connect, we're just about to up level together. And yeah, definitely. I yeah. cannot express what like a divine <laughs> confirmation it is to have witnessed this today. Um and yeah, I'm just feeling really excited. I Sarah, I would love to have a minute with you before we go. So I'm gonna end the YouTube here now. Okay, okay. Just because I'd like to gift you an invitation. <laughs> so calling in our energy into the body, clearing, cleansing, aligning, releasing, all that no longer serves. Only that which is for the highest good of all shall come through in this now moment. And so it is. Thank you. Goodbye, beautiful beings. All unfolds in the perfect way. If you'd like to connect with Sarah, I shall put her socials in the downstairs. And I will be here again tomorrow. All unfolds in the perfect way. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> oh, my computer's frozen. You can have a second longer with us. <laughs>